All right, so last thing of the day, uh, we're gonna take a closer look at autotrophs and heterotrophs. Now, what you're gonna do is, for each slide that you see going on in this video, uh, you're gonna write down the underlined portion. If it's a question, you're gonna write down that question, and then you're gonna answer it uh, while the sub pauses the video, and then uh, when you hit play, I'll talk about the information, right? Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what are some common traits that autotrophs and producers have? So take a look at these pictures here and think about the common traits that autotrophs or producers have. Okay, so autotrophs, um, remember, are organisms that can make or produce their own food by trapping energy from the sun or from chemicals. Um, so one thing you should have noticed about producers is that they're all plants that we're looking at here and that they are green, um, they all grow all sorts of different things. So there's many different things that you should have come up with on your paper for um, traits that autotrophs have. So most of the time when you think of autotrophs, just simply think of plants. Any plant you can think of would fall into the category of an autotroph. Okay? Uh, and uh, as far as remembering for heterotrophs too, um, if it's not a plant, it's probably not an autotroph. That's basically the one way of thinking about it. If it's not a plant, it's not an autotroph, um, it's gonna be a heterotroph instead. All right, let's go ahead and answer this question here. So, heterotrophs are organisms that eat other organisms to get their energy. So are plants heterotrophs? Do plants fall into the heterotroph cat category? The answer, no. Plants are not heterotrophs. Plants are autotrophs only. Um, if plants were heterotrophs, uh, it would be kind of creepy. You'd be walking by a tree and it'd reach out, try to grab you so that it can eat you. Uh, but plants don't do that. They don't grab and eat other living things uh, in order to get their energy. They use energy from the sun to make their own food. Now there are some exceptions. I know you guys are thinking out there right now, wait, 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 what about the Venus flytrap, stuff like that. Yes, so there are some plants um, that blur the line that are both autotroph and heterotroph. But for the most part, plants are autotrophs only. All right, another type of autotroph um, that we know of besides plants, so primarily plants, autotrophs, that's what you think right there. Um, but there is one other type of organism that we know of, um, which is a type of bacteria that live at the bottom of the ocean near ocean floor vents, where there's lots of different chemicals coming out there. It's extremely hot. We used to think nothing could live there, but now we know that there's actually some bacteria that live there. And these bacteria, they're not heterotrophs, they're actually autotrophs. Um, but instead of grabbing energy from the sun, remember there's no sunlight down at the bottom of the ocean, they get energy from the chemicals that are coming out from the center of the earth. They're able to get the energy out of those chemicals and make their own food that way and survive. Um, so these bacteria are also autotrophs. Okay, so there are five different types of heterotrophs. Um, so you could take the heterotroph category. Remember, a heterotroph is an organism that has to eat other living things in order to get their energy. And you can divide them into five major categories uh, based on what they eat. So let's go ahead and take a look. The first is carnivores. So what kind of food do you think carnivores eat to get their energy? All right, if you put meat down, that is correct. So um, the classic definition is that carnivores eat meat in order to get their energy. Um, and that is their primary source of energy, meat. Uh, if you wanna be more scientific, uh, I'd like you to go ahead and write this down. Carnivores eat other organisms, other consumers in order to get their energy. Okay, so carnivores eat other consumers or heterotrophs to get their energy. Um, so if we take a look at these pictures here, uh, each one of these will eat meat in order to get their energy, and that is their primary source. Now sometimes people say, wait, I've seen my dog chew on some grass before. Um, I thought he was a carnivore. Uh, doesn't that make him something else if he's eating the grass? Well, that's not your dog's source of energy. Your dog is chewing on the grass to settle its stomach, not to get energy. Um, so in that case, it doesn't count. Now here, some people say, wait, that's a spider. It, e it eats insects, not meat. Remember, the better, more scientific definition of a carnivore is that they eat um, other uh, heterotrophs, other consumers to get their energy. So 
spiders eat insects, which are also heterotrophs, to get their energy. Uh, and they actually fall into a special class called insectivores. Um, so all of these eat meat or eat other heterotrophs to get their energy. All right, herbivores. Um, each one of these organisms is an herbivore. If you put down that herbivores eat plants only to get their energy, um, you are correct. The better definition uh, would be that herbivores eat autotrophs only to get their energy. Okay. Um, does that mean if uh, you put a piece of meat in front of a bunny and it eats it, it's automatically not an herbivore? No. Um, what that means is the bunny was probably really, really hungry, um, but it's not their primary source of energy if it eats that little piece of meat that you put in front of it. Um, these herbivores here prefer uh, plants or autotrophs to get their energy, um, so that is their primary source of energy. All right, next we have omnivores. Um, omnivores uh, get energy by eating both plants and animals. So carnivores were meat only, um, herbivores were plants only, omnivores here are both. So omnivores can eat both plants and animals to get their primary source of energy. Um, so scientific definition would be that omnivores eat both heterotrophs and autotrophs to get their energy. Um, so humans, we're a really good example. Uh, we eat meat, um, chicken, fish, beef. Uh, deer. Um, we eat all different kinds of meat in order to get our energy, uh, but we also eat plants. So if you've ever had a salad, you're eating plants there. Uh, broccoli, all those different things, plants. Bears are also another great example of omnivores. A lot of people don't realize that bears, um, their primary, they actually don't focus, even though they're omnivores, they focus more on the plant side than they do the meat side. People think that bears are, oh, human killers, that kind of thing. Um, but they actually um, spend most of their time foraging for uh, berries and digging up roots. Their claws are actually designed to dig up roots more than they are to attack and kill something. All right, decomposers. Um, for this one, I want you to go ahead and write down this definition. Okay, um, so decomposers are organisms that break, use chemicals to break apart tissue or cells. Okay, um, so our primary examples of decomposers are bacteria and fungus. Those are the two biggest decomposers out there, bacteria and fungus. We're not saying decomposers eat bacteria and fungus, that's not what I'm saying at all. Bacteria and fungus are decomposers. They use chemicals to break apart um, dead and living tissue in order to get their energy. Okay? Uh, one big thing here that I'm going to say, and you're going to understand why in a moment, is um, these decomposers, they don't have mouths. They just simply release chemicals to break apart tissue and cells uh, in order to get their energy. All right, the last category for our heterotrophs here is uh, detritivores. Detritivores are a special classification of decomposers, and uh, what you should have written down for what you think they eat is that they eat um, stuff that's already dead. Detritivores do not like eating living things. Now, how are detritivores different from a decomposer? Detritivores have mouths and they will wait for something to be dead before they go down and eat it. So picture the old school movie, the guy walking across the desert and the buzzards circling around him because they know he's going to die soon. Um, they will wait till he falls over dead, come down, and then start eating him. Um, so a buzzard is a really good example, and we're going to learn about some other examples for detritivores. Um, but the big difference between detritivores and the, the general class of decomposers is that detritivores have mouths, and uh, they kind of scavenge. They look for their dead food and then they eat it. All right, so that is all five um, uh, categories for heterotrophs. Um, and you should have examples of each one and uh, what they actually feed on, uh, what they eat to get their energy.